Hey everyone, we've got a pretty interesting video for you today, I think. Um, we're going to start a brand new video series on this channel. And this idea, I can't take credit for. Actually, a friend of mine, um, who is also a fan of the channel, suggested this idea. And I thought, it's a brilliant, wonderful idea. So we're going to start a new video series, thanks to him. And the video series is going to be about... Kit's evolution throughout the four years the show was on the air. And with each video, we're going to focus on one specific part of Kit. One video is going to be just the front nose and the changes in the front nose over the four years. One is going to be just on the overhead console, on the dash, things like that. Today's video is going to be the evolution of the lower console in Kit. Um, I think it's going to be a pretty cool uh, uh, video series. I think you guys are going to like it. We're going to show you each version of lower consoles. If we have an original or if we have a copy of an original of these pieces, we'll show them to you. And um, yeah, I think it'll be a lot of fun. So today is episode one of our Knight Rider Kit Evolution video series on the lower console. All right, so to start us off on the evolution of Kit's lower console, I actually brought out a stock 82 to 84 Trans Am lower console. Um, I'm aware not all of you guys might know what I mean when I talk about Kit's lower console, so I wanted to give this visual aid, and then we'll kind of dig into each individual version of the consoles over the four years the show was on the air. Um, Kit's lower console was a fiberglass panel with, uh, you know, buttons and lights and everything that sat on top of the factory Trans Am lower console. This is the console that goes between the driver's seat and the passenger seat um, with the shifter assembly, as you can see here. Um, on a factory Trans Am, the window switches are right here. Um, if it has power windows, the power window switches are right here. The emergency brake would be right here in this little hole. Cigarette lighter, radio, HVAC controls, and our um, uh, glove box that doesn't like to stay shut. So the Knight Rider lower console, and this is an example I have. This is um, a copy I had. I'm not sure whose vendor this is. I've had this thing forever. Um, but um, just to give you a, a visual of how it works. So this is um, not a screen used, or not a screen accurate lower console. Um, but it'll do for this uh, demonstration. So the Knight Rider lower console with its arm, this arm was built so the dash, the, you know how the dash curves out with the two TVs or the one TV, would s it was supposed to sit on this arm. Now in reality, the studio never made this tall enough, so the dash would always sag to sit on this arm, so you have to put a spacer in. But anyways, um, this is where all the electronics would go. And then the console was mounted to the stock Trans Am lower console just like this. Um, usually on the show, what they would do is they would open the center console and run some screws in through the plastic of the factory lower console into the Knight Rider lower console, and that would hold that part in place. This would be held in place by the weight of the dashboard sitting on top of it. And again, it was Hollywood. They just kind of threw this stuff in there. But as you can see, by putting this console in, it covers the factory power window switches, factory um, power mirrors, and the emergency brake. Um, now, for the show purposes, they didn't care that the emergency brake was covered because the cars all were equipped with brake line lock systems, so they didn't even really use the e-brake too much, or hardly at all. And remember, only certain Knight Rider cars actually got a lower console. All the stunt cars just had the factory Trans Am lower console in it, right? They didn't need to put this in. But the uh, hero cars, the insert cars, all had um, Knight Rider lower consoles in them, just like that. 
So usually on the cars, um, they would relocate the window switches and depending on what year um, we're talking about, the first and second season, they would actually move the switches to the Knight Rider console. They were part of the electronics here. In the third and fourth season, they mounted them on the arm right here. Um, the third and fourth season, as you'll see in a little bit, is curved a little bit more and they would mount the switches there. Um, the shifter is unaffected, as you can see. You can still shift um, usually all the gears. First gear, um, whole way down, is kind of hard to get to with this console, but no one really uses that gear anyways, right? Um, so throughout the course of the four years, there were three different lower consoles. There was a season one, a season two, and then season three and four were the same lower console. And each one had different electronics, different bezels. We actually have examples of all three style bezels. The, uh, the piece that would go in here to hold all the buttons and the, the lights. We have examples of all three here, which we'll show you. Um, and um, this is one of those interesting parts because, you know, Michael Chaffe designed the original lower console. But then Universal Studios came in um, partway through season two, redesigned not only the electronics, but the whole fiberglass piece for uh, the second season. And then they redesigned it again for the third and fourth season. And for a part that's not really seen too much or seen up close, it does make you wonder why they ever bothered to totally re-sculpt the fiberglass for each year. Why didn't they just use the original season one fiberglass and just change out the electronics? I don't know. All right, so let's go through each one starting with the original season one Michael Chaffee designed lower console. You also told me this machine couldn't have a collision. And not if the system is operable. And to do that, you have to uh, switch it on first. All right, so in the collection, this is uh, a bezel representing the season one. This is not original, this is a reproduction. But this represents the season one style so it would go right here it doesn't fit into this console because again this wasn't designed for this bezel um, but it would sit just like that and in this console we have the two factory window switches here four white rockers that lit up and you know in the show in universe they really didn't do much i don't think and then you have um, a series of 10 red and green push button switches that go here this big opening was for what um, in universe is called the space mat. It was just a, a colorful series of, of buttons. Again, it was all just for looks. Um, you never really saw it used too much. I think in the pilot, Devin presses some buttons to turn on the collision avoidance system and trust doesn't rust. Michael presses some buttons to um, uh, get police frequency to find out where car is, but for the most part, this is, you know, there was nothing assigned to any of these buttons on here. Um, now, I talked about this space mat here, and um, what's interesting is, you know, not only with Knight Rider, but a lot of, of Hollywood shows of the day, and probably still today, they would repurpose off-the-shelf stuff for props, right? And um, this console was no different. So this space mat was actually an old Texas Instruments calculator of the day um, that would fit right in here. So I actually have one of those calculators here. The Texas Instruments uh, 1250 electro electronic calculator with memory. How about that? And when does this date from? It probably dates right around 1982. Let me take it out of the box here. Yeah, there we go. So, uh, is there any date on the back? There is not a date on the back, as you can see. But for those of you familiar with this lower console, those buttons sure look familiar, right? So, um, basically what they did is they gutted this calculator, took just the keypad off, and it would be the keypad that sat right inside of there. In fact, I have one of these kind of gutted, it's broken a little bit, but you can see all the switches right in there. So um, they basically added little colored stickers onto here and mounted it just like that. And now you have your space mat. 
And the rest of these were just off the shelf rocker switches and buttons, nothing special about them. Um, well, to us, they're special, right? And um, then the whole thing was there, painted black, and voila, you've got your season one lower console. Now this season one lower console, I keep calling it season one, but in reality, this console actually um, made it into season two as well. Um, the first few episodes of season two still had um, the season one console in it. And then there's a point in the series where they refreshed the dashboard. And when they did that, they also refreshed the lower console and put a, a new one in. So currently there are no known season one screen used lower consoles still out there. I'm not saying there aren't, but we just don't know about them. Um, so everything that's out there for season one has just been sculpted based on screenshots. There's, there's no original season one consoles out there. Kit, run me the specs on those weapons. There is, however, a season two console out there and we own, um, one, one of them, yes. We own one screen used season two lower console. It's in one of our original cars. A um, couple years ago, we pulled it out, made a mold of it, um, and um, cast a few copies over the years. But this bezel, and I can't find my, I have a, a nice metal one that's powder coated black. I can't find it right now. This is just an acrylic uh, template used to create it. But this uh, console was a little bit different. It still had the same, uh, rocker switches in the middle and the power window switches there. But instead of the uh, 10 red and green push buttons, it's now 12 over here of multiple different colors, orange and yellow, I think red, maybe blue. And then here there was a keypad. Um, it looked like cash register keys actually. And, um, and then a red bar graph down here. And again, this console I'm sorry, this bezel would sit right down here in the console. And again, you can see this one doesn't really fit in this center console either. But, um, and in fact, if we compare these two, you can see season one is a little taller and season two is a little longer. But again, why did they change them? I don't, I don't know. But um, season two, this was another console that, um, you never again, they never really showed the detail too much and what this um, console did or what these buttons did. They were just there for, for show. by sometime. It was a pleasure meeting you, Dr. Nightwood. The pleasure was mine, Miss Brown. All right, and then this is a season three and season four bezel. They completely redesigned, again, the lower console for season three. And for season three and four, they actually put in um, more off the shelf pieces, right? First of all, the window switches are no longer um, on this console. So that's why they had to move them up to the arm like I talked about. Um, but now there's this series, you see all these holes here. There's a series of, of colored LEDs that just sat in there, just lit up, didn't do anything else. But then these two openings here, this one was for an off the shelf, um, five and a quarter inch floppy disk, uh, drive right here. And then this is an Alpine, um, cassette deck unit, head unit, um, and these were chosen by Michael Chaffee. He didn't actually build this console, but he did design it. Um, if you go to some of the, the Knight Rider shows, Southern Knights Atlanta, you'll see some of his uh, uh, early sketches for the series and for season three and four. And um, he designed this. He didn't actually build it, though. Um, and then, you know, so this is another console that, again, you never really saw them use it too much, right? You'd see the, when anytime Kit was recording, you'd see the cassette tape pop out of the, the Alpine deck that was in here. But really, again, it was just for, for show. I think there's one episode where you kind of see 
uh, Bonnie taking a five and a quarter floppy and putting it down like she was going to put it in here, but you don't actually see her put it in here. So much like the calculator for uh, the season one lower console, I actually have the original um, floppy drive that um, was used, that was butchered and used to um, put into the season three and four lower console. This is a super five external five and a quarter inch floppy drive. And let's see if I can do this. So it would sit something like this, right? They would, they actually gutted this. They just took the, the uh, face plate and mounted it right there. And then that's how you get your um, floppy drive in the middle. And then I also have the Alpine 7155 head unit. This is the donor unit that they used for this part right down here. Now, you'll probably notice the head unit is wider than the bezel. They actually hacked this. They took off these uh, equalizer, the power balance fader, all these sliders. They cut that part off there and just had this over, just kind of, kind of like that. And that's how they did that console. So this one probably was a lot easier for them to build because they didn't need a bunch of buttons and switches. They just had to throw some LEDs in this array, throw in a floppy drive, throw in um, the Alpine deck, put some LEDs here, and it's good to go. All right, before we put this one to bed, let's recap the different lower consoles and which descendants of the originals survived. Season one, neither the fiberglass housing nor the original electronics and bezels, nor the original mold from any of the original lower consoles are still known to exist. From season two, four original fiberglass housings are still known to exist. No original electronics or bezels, nor any original molds from the series are known to exist, but a modern mold made from an original season two lower console housing does exist. And finally, seasons three and four. Two original fiberglass housings are still known to exist. No original electronics or bezels, nor any original molds made from the series are known to exist. But again, a modern mold made from an original season three and four lower console housing does still exist. All right, so I hope you've enjoyed this lower console lesson. Um, especially, this might be especially handy for those of you that are going to be building a kit replica. You can see kind of maybe which version lower console you want, what you like, what you don't like, things like that. So we're going to continue on with our series. The next one in this video series is going to be the upper console and all the variations it went through. Hope you enjoyed this. Let me know down in the comments below if you like this. Let me know if you're building or have built a kit replica and what season car you've built. I'd be curious to hear about it. As always, thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you next time. Hello friends, it's me, Kit. When I'm not out fighting crime, I like to follow my friends at nightriderhistorians.com. Check it out. <laughs>